Today on Zoom, once upon a time, there was a princess with a horrible temper. What? Hey, Alini, you want to race? Sure. Go. Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Hi, we're at Under Mountain School from Sheffield, Massachusetts. because we're about to play Sleepwalking Really. And it was emailed to us by Jessica M. from Michigan. To play, you need a robe, a pair of pajamas, and slippers for each team. Put on your pajamas, your robe, and your slippers, and sleepwalk to the end of the course and back. Oh, and you have to snort, too. The first team finished sleepwalking wins. Here we go, here we go. Oh, sorry, you got a feeling. On your mark, get Team, the red team's hurrying up to get their robe on. Now the red team's in the lead. Little bit. He's sleepwalking. Sleepwalking. Matt's paying the ball. Yes, the red. And there's Alini. Alini's up. And now they're getting back. Alini's back. Open your eyes. All right, they're ripping Matt's pajamas off. that you can do in the kitchen. It's an experiment to find how much fat different foods have. 
It was sent to us by Alec R. of Chicago, Illinois. Here's what you need. A brown paper bag cut into small square sections and different foods to test it out with. We tested french fries, potato chips, a baked potato, peanuts, peanut butter, an apple and a banana, hot dogs, and some butter. Here's what you'll do. First, you rub the food onto the paper bag square, like this. Can you hold it? Yeah, sure. Oh, all right, there we go. Then you let it sit overnight. The next day, you'll see how much fat it has. The ones with the greasiest spots are the fattiest foods. We did an experiment to see which of these foods have the most fat. Yesterday, we rubbed these foods onto the brown paper bag squares. Then we let them sit overnight. Before we take a look, which foods do you predict will have the most fat? I think probably the butter. I'm just guessing, but I think the butter might have the most fat because... I've heard it, butter's made out of cream, and I think uh, I've heard that yeah. cream is really fattening. Yeah. Which and I think, think butter will be yeah, which really fattening. Which do you think will be the least? I think probably the fruit, the apple and the banana. And I think so because fruits are supposed to be really healthy mm -hmm. for you, and it's good to eat apples and bananas. So I don't think it has a lot of fat in it, if any, at all. Yeah, it probably has the good kind of fat because it's yeah. good and bad. So let's check out. Okay. Let's check it out. Ready? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Whoa, Whoa, look at the french fries. <laughs> I know, it's like so dark. I know french fries have a lot of grease in it, but so that's probably funny, but I, I thought definitely the butter was going to be. but look at the butter. Go they come close. Yeah. yeah, but I think butter might come right after. And peanut butter is pretty bad, too. Look. I know. Icky. So those three are kind of, yeah, like one, two, three. Yeah. But I'm not sure. And I think the apple, the apple doesn't have a lot. Yeah, because we predicted they'd yeah. be the, the least. Fattening. And, and the banana left some, like, residue yeah. on it, but it's, I don't banana. think it's fat. It's yeah, it might be banana. other things from it. And the potato chips, too. Look at them. Potato chips. Yeah. Baked potato doesn't have anything, though. I think fried foods, because yeah. potato, they're both potatoes, potato mm -hmm. chips and baked potato. But I think if you fry them, like in the potato chips, then they make more fat into it. Or... How fatty are the foods you eat? Try testing them at home. Send your discoveries to Zoom. <laughs> because we get to go up high. The water roller coaster ride because it flat splashes you and it makes you choke. My favorite's the roller coaster because you get to go up and you drop down. My favorite carnival ride is the purple cars because cause I can bump people. My favorite carnival ride is the roller coaster because they're fun and scary. Splash up because you get to, get to go down a big fall. My favorite carnival ride is the elephants because they're nice and big. My favorite ride is the Ferris wheel because we can relax on it and we can feel the cold air and breezes and we go up high. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Why, hello, Mrs. Dubby. Why, hello again, Mrs. Dubby. Oh, and how's the baby? I'm 12 years old. My neighborhood's called Tribeca. 
My old elementary school is about six blocks from the World Trade Center. After the tragedy took place, you know, you see all these tired workers been doing stuff all day and people covered in dust and everything. You really need to do something about it. The cookies were a combination of my mom and my idea. They've just come out of a disaster zone and then when they get a cookie, it's like something that their mom used to make them. Um, the helping makes me feel like I'm participating. I'm also someone who's working to make this community back to how it used to be and make a little town kind of normal again. There we go, train number three. Some good that's going to be able to come out of this because it's bringing everybody together. Chocolate cookie, homemade. How do I resist her? Look at her. How can I resist you? <laughs> I'd have to say, I really good. I really want to stay in this neighborhood. I know a lot of people are going away because they feel it's unsafe, but this is my neighborhood. This is where I grew up, and this is where I want to be. It's where we are, and we're going to work here, and we're going to stay here. by helping out at a nursing home. Our teachers started bringing us a couple years ago and now we have lots of friends there. There are lots of different things to do at the residence. First, we just talk to them and say hi. Then we help to deliver and read their mail and play games like chess and checkers. We also do arts and crafts projects and listen to their amazing stories. Next, we'll either read or have lunch together, but we always exercise because that's really good for them and us too. I think the residents really like it when we visit, which is great because we like it too. Want to be a member of the Zoom team, too? Visit wgby.org slash Zoom and tell us what you do to volunteer. Find out what other kids are doing and learn how you can volunteer in your community. Remember, the small things you do can add up to make a big difference. Zoom into action and join the Zoom team! Zoom do. Watch this toy climb up the string. The directions to make this were sent in by Susanna L. of Downers Grove, Illinois. Here's what you'll need. A paper plate for the body of your toy. You also want stuff to decorate it. Some string so that your toy can climb up. A straw so your toy can slide up and down the string. Two beads so your toy doesn't fall off the string. And a paper towel tube to tie your string to. First, trace an animal on your paper plate. I'm going to make a tortoise. You don't have to make a tortoise. You can make a wacky person or a funny design. But whatever you make, you have to make sure it has arms or flaps like these so it can hold on to the string. Then, cut out and decorate your design and make sure you decorate the backs of your arms because you're going to fold them over later like this and you're going to see them. Then, cut two one inch pieces of straw and take your tape and put one of the straws in the middle of your flap and tape it down. And do the same with the other side. Take a piece of tape and tape it down. Next, take a stapler and fold over the flap like this and staple it down. Oh, didn't work. Huh. Try it. 
There we go. And fold it over like this. And staple it down. Now the body of my toy is complete and it should look like this. Now it's time to hang up my toy. Next, cut two pieces of string about this long and tie one of them on each end of your paper towel tube. You want to cut a smaller piece of string and tie it in the middle of your paper towel tube. Now, to put your toy onto the strings, you want to take one of the strings and put it through your straw and pull it through and do the same with the other side. Take your string and put it through the straw. And now, so your toy doesn't fall off the strings, take your beads and put one of the beads on your string. There we go. And then tie a knot so your bead doesn't come off. And do the same with the other side. And then tie a knot. Okay. The toy climbs up the string because when I pull the right string, it goes up the right side until it gets stuck. And then when I pull the left string, it goes up the left side until it gets stuck. And it goes like that all the way up the string. Make two toys and race a friend. I'm going to race a weenie. Hey, a weenie. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> you want to race? Sure. Let's just pull these down. Okay. Ready? Yep. On your mark, get set, go! Oh, one. Huh. I don't know, I think it was a tie. Okay. <laughs> Good race. Huh. If you missed any directions, go to the Zoom News section of the Zoom website at pbskids.org. <laughs> Lizzie's Adventure, written and illustrated by Jenna R. of Transfer, Pennsylvania. Lizzie a lizard and Gus a dog are Jeff's household pets. The pets are friends and spend hours talking to each other. Lizzie always wanted to experience freedom from her cage, only for a moment. One day, Jeff fell asleep in his chair with his earphones on. Gus said to Lizzie, Do you still wish to explore only for a moment? She said, yes. Gus decided to knock over the cage so the door would open. Now Lizzie was free to roam. He reminded her, only for a moment. And they began their adventure. To speed things up, Gus suggested that she ride on his back. Lizzie's claws clutched onto Gus's collar for the house tour. Gus showed her his play toy. Lizzie liked to roll the huge ball. They played for only a moment. Suddenly, Lizzie noticed the open window. She said, I would love to go outside for only a moment. Gus helped Lizzie up to the windowsill, and she dropped into the mulch against the house. Lizzie had mulch in her cage. It felt familiar. Lizzie was attracted to the beautiful flowers. She noticed the insects flying around the flowers. She thought the insects might be crickets, the food Jeff puts in her cage. She was curious and put her nose into the middle of a flower. Before Gus could warn her that honeybees were not crickets, he heard her scream, Help! I got zapped by an angry cricket! Gus came to the window and explained honeybees love flowers too. Gus reassured her that she would be fine. Lizzie told Gus she had enough adventure, for a moment, and went back into the house. Gus checked her swollen nose and helped her into her cage. She lay there happily, thinking of the adventure. Gus was happy to have Lizzie experience freedom from her cage. It was fun. Only for a moment. The end. Si quieres compartir tus ideas y tus cuentos con otros Zoomers, if you want to share your ideas and stories with other Zoomers, chequea la página de Zoom en el Internet. Búscala en pbskids.org. 
check out the Zoom website at pbskids.org. Si no tienes una computadora en tu casa, es posible que puedes usar una en tu biblioteca más cercana. And if you don't have a computer at home, there's probably one in your local library. Hey, not bad. Gracias. Earlier, we tested different foods that have different amounts of oil. Sarah B., a favorite in New Brunswick and Canada, sent us another thing we can do with oil. You can use it with water and food coloring to make really cool designs. Here's what you do. First, pour some water into a cup. That's good. Yeah. Then, cover the top of the water with a layer of vegetable oil. I'm going to put it there. You can have a little more if you want. <laughs> that looks cool. See? The vegetable oil and the water don't mix. Next, carefully add a few drops of food coloring onto the top of the oil. And make sure they're spread far apart so that they don't mix. You can help me out if you want. Just head. Look at that. Is it just red? Yeah. No, I'm going to add some yellow. Whoa. Look at the, that red. Wow. And... Oh, wow. Mine broke through right away. Wow. 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 Yellow yeah, just went through right like that. Cool. Oh. There they go. It's Look at so it. Pretty. When it goes down. So cool. Oh, there they oh, go. My God. Do you see how the food coloring goes through the oil? Cool. When the food coloring is in the oil, the oil sticks to the outside of the food coloring. Mm -hmm. It's like the oil acts as a raft and lets the food coloring float between the oil and the water. Oh, wow, awesome. look at that color. Wow. Then the food coloring goes through the oil and through the water. The covering of oil breaks and the food coloring spreads out and makes a really cool design. Here's why. Oil doesn't mix with water. Oil particles are very different from water particles. So when you pour oil into water, they don't mix. Oil doesn't mix with food coloring either. So when the food coloring goes through the oil, it stays in a ball and doesn't spread out. It makes sense that food coloring doesn't mix with oil, because food coloring is mostly made out of water, and water doesn't mix with oil. But food coloring does mix with water. So once the food coloring breaks through the layer of oil, it spreads out. The coating of oil isn't very strong, so it can't hold up the food coloring for a very long time. That's really cool. No. Do you know any other really cool things that you can do with oil? If you do, send your science ideas to Zoom. Thank you for joining us for today's performance entitled, All of That, inspired by an idea sent to us by Penop J of New York, New York. <coughs> Once upon a time, there was a princess with a horrible temper. <sighs> it was so bad that the queen could do nothing about it. But one day, ding dong. Come in. Thank you. Queen for her daughter's hand in marriage. Really? Well, wait here while I go ask the Queen. A uh, Queen? Yeah? There's a prince out there who wants your daughter to give him a hand. Oh, really? I'll go tell the princess. Oh, princess? What? There's a prince who wants you to give him a hand. Fine. Fine. The princess says... The princess says... What are you doing? You wanted the princess to give you a hand. No, I wanted her hand in marriage. You want to marry her hand? No, not just her hand, all of her. All of her? All of her. Okay, just wait. 
The pig says he wants all of that. All of that, the gardener? Yeah, he wants his hand. The prince says he wants all of that. The gardener? Yeah, he's handy. <sighs> Yes, princess. Come here. Are you the prince? Yes, yes. Well, this is Oliver. You need a hand? <laughs> Got a tail, a bed, a plank, a car that's homegrown. You're very old. Present your creation. Overtures with Tunes and Spoons, a virtual glass xylophone that you can find at the Zoom website, America Online, keyword PBS Kids, or at pbskids.org. for inclusion in all Zoom media. This means that we can share your ideas with other Zoomers on TV, the web, in print materials, and in other media. So, send it to Zoom. It's time for Her Majesty's Royal Soccer Game. It's time for Her Majesty's Royal Soccer Game. My dear, it's time for your Royal Soccer not now! I'm busy! Her Majesty must not be disturbed. She's online at the Zoom website. That's right! PBSKids.org Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation, and by Contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thanks. 